Actually, no, don't take it with you. I want to hold it. I want to keep it. I want, I want to hold on to it. I want to play. I want to play a little more with it. Yeah. You don't even, that's, like, I'm, you don't even like these projectors. No, I love that. That's a, good, that's a damn good projector. 8.3 milliseconds, 1080, 120. Are you kidding me? I don't care too much about the HDR and the 4K. I just need to dominate the competition on a large screen size. So you need to get rid of the Sony? I wouldn't mind replacing the Sony with that one, quite honestly. All right, guys, welcome to my theater this time. Not Shane's, mine. And for this review, we have in something special that I truly believe is going to capture the heart of a lot of gamers. It's the BenQ TK700. And for this review, we're mostly gonna focus on the gaming qualities and aspects of it, how it performs, how it makes me feel, considering it has 16 milliseconds of input lag. Now, that's supposed to be very good for, say, your advanced enthusiast, not quite your pro, pro, sweaty, evil type gamers who play those fighting games, but good enough for most people, I would say. As far as everything else is concerned with this projector, Shane is gonna go into more detail with that with you, so stay tuned in the video for that when Shane gets to it. I'm still using that old piece of shit right there. The 40ES from Sony. Now, maybe I was a little harsh. It's not a piece of shit. It's fine for movies only. For gaming, it could be better. Because I hear that this projector has 16 milliseconds of input lag, which is good because my 40ES has 20 in game mode. This projector was put automatically into game mode as soon as we turned on the Xbox and right away I could tell, look at this. The image is very nice. To me, the gameplay is good. I would recommend this to somebody who's looking for like an enthusiast type of projector that also plays games and a little bit of movies on the side. I haven't seen the movies again. Right now we're playing the latest from WWE, WWE 2K22. The reason why I'm showing you this one is because when it comes to reversals and when, when it comes to playing the game and winning, you have to reverse well, you have to be quick on your feet, you have to be twitchily responsive, if that's a word, but you gamers know what I'm talking about. This game is a little bit slower than your average fighting game though, like Mortal Kombat or a DBZ or a Street Fighter. It's gonna be good enough if you just play those games at, I would say, an advanced enthusiast level, better than casual, but not quite pro. Because pros, they really need those, um, that lower millisecond, like, like 10 and under, right? Uh, that's what I would recommend for a pro because Evo monitors are around those measurements. But this is good enough for a game like this because I was playing this game on my OLED, 30 milliseconds of input lag and it sucked. I could barely reverse, especially online because this game has bad net code. Okay, so I just noticed that on BenQ's website for the TK700 that you can engage 1080-120 at 8.33 milliseconds and that right there will bring it a monitor level responsiveness, even lower than my BenQ HL 2460 that I have. And at 1080 240 hertz, you can do four milliseconds. Now, of course, these are the supported settings. If you're just trying to go balls to the wall, everything out maxed out, I want to do 4K HDR, blah, blah, blah. But let's do this. Let's go manual right here. Go to HDMI, use manual settings. Watch this, watch this. 1080 120 right now. According to BenQ's website, per the graphic that Shane put up on the screen, 1080-120 is gonna give me 8.33 milliseconds, which is fantastic. So if I go ahead and I try to play this again, oh yeah, that, that feels like I'm in the car. No, that's, that's, that's like, look at this, look at this. You could probably slow this down, but I want you to see the hands on the screen. It's quick. You, we'd have to have the Leo Bodner in to confirm this, but it feels much better than the 16. It's literally cut in half, all right? 1080-120, you're not gonna get your HDR. But if you're competitive, everything I said in the beginning of the video, if you're competitive, right? This is really gonna get you in that space to be a sweaty try-hard pro. And 8.33 milliseconds, you really made me happy with this one at 1080-120. This right here feels way quicker in the menus. You know, I told you guys I liked it. Now, I love it. 8.33, you gotta turn off the HDR, you gotta turn off the 4K, 1080, 120. All right, so right here, this guy's gonna get it. Look at this, look at this, look at this, easy. Light work, he killed himself. It looks like he killed himself, but I killed him. Boom, done, clean, easy. Oh my goodness, four, not four milliseconds, 8.33. We effectively cut the input lag that you would get in game mode, out the box, 4K, HDR, 
from 16, which was fine. I thought it was great. I was saying good things about it, but now I'm excited. Can you hear it in my voice? I'm amped up. I could really whip some ass with this right here. Look at that, boom. BenQ wasn't lying on our website with their marketing. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. First option we have here are the picture settings. For picture modes, we got bright, living room, game, sports, cinema, and user. Under the user setting, we have a user management. We can reload settings or rename the user mode. We've got brightness, contrast, sharpness, and brilliant color sliders. Under advanced color settings, we've got gamma selection. We've got 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, Ben Q, and then down to 1.8. If you've got some measurement gear, you can change the color settings here for fine tuning. And there's even more color management here that you can adjust if you have the proper tools. Under light source mode, we've got normal, which is gonna be the brightest light output. Eco mode, which is gonna extend lamp life. Smart eco mode, which will adjust accordingly to how bright or how dim the picture is. So if it's a brighter scene, the lamp will ramp upwards. And if it's a darker scene, it'll ramp down, which will enhance black levels and also extend lamp life. And then you have lamp save, which is self-explanatory. But I think if you wanna get the most brightness out of the projector, then you're probably gonna to wanna to keep this on normal. And this little grayed out section where it says HDR brightness, if we were playing HDR content, by turning that up, the HDR image will get a lot brighter. By turning it down, it'll get a lot dimmer. And the last section is reset current picture mode, which resets everything back to its default. Under audio, we've got cinema, music, game, sports, and user. If you put this under user, you got a few different sound EQ modes that you can adjust. You've got 100 Hertz all the way up to 10 kilohertz. You can turn mute on and off, adjust the volume, or turn the power on off ringtone on or off. For display aspect ratio, we've got auto, four by three, 16 by nine, or you can just keep it on auto. We've got auto search for source, source rename, HDMI settings. For HDMI, we've got HDMI format, we've got auto, limited, full, and back to auto. We've got HDMI equalizer, HDMI EDID, and HDMI CEC control, which you can turn on and off. But since I've got this going through my processor, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that off. For installation, we've got a few different options here. We've got front, front ceiling, rear, and rear ceiling. Now here we've got 2D keystone correction. So if you want to pick your angle, if you can't get the projector lined up perfectly square, then you can adjust the keystone here. Obviously you don't wanna use this or else you're gonna be cutting away at your 4K resolution. So for the best, you want to get this as square as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna be ruining your picture quality. And the next section is the auto vertical keystone, which you can turn on or off. We're not gonna use any of the keystone, so we're gonna keep that off. And under Lumi Expert, this will adjust the projector's light output depending on your ambient light. Test pattern, you can turn this on or off to get the projector squared up with your screen and to also adjust focus. High altitude mode will turn the fan on the projector up high to keep the projector cool. We're gonna keep that off. And under system, we've got language, background settings, menu settings, which you can either choose between basic and advanced. Under menu display time is the timeout for the menu. You can either keep it always on or choose between five seconds all the way up to 30 seconds. The menu position, we've got center, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, or you can keep it back on center. Under light source information, this gives you the hours used for each of the output modes. Under operation settings, we've got a reminder message, LED indicator, on or off, power on off settings, which we have direct power on. Under auto power off, you've got anywhere between three minutes all the way up to 30 minutes, or you can disable it altogether. Here we've got some security settings, or you can reset everything back to its factory default. And lastly is the information. Under information, this will show you the incoming source, resolution, what HDMI input, picture mode, light source mode, 3D format, which is supported, color system dynamic range, and firmware version and security code. And that is it for these settings. As far as image quality is concerned, I don't know if you can tell from this video, but this is an extremely bright projector. It does have an output rated at 3200 lumens, 
And from sitting here on my 0.8 gain screen, this is one of the brightest projectors that I've seen in my theater. It even rivals the JVC NZ7 that I have in for review as well. And that is an $11,000 projector. Obviously it's not quite as sharp and clean or really capture all the colors that the JVC can, but at this price point, I think a lot of folks are gonna be very happy with the performance. The whites are extremely bright and clean. The colors are bright, they're vibrant, they're punchy. So for brilliant color, if you keep it on zero, you can see how dim this image is. So I think most people are probably going to keep this on 10 to get the most pop out of it. So everything is a lot brighter, colors are more vivid, everything just jumps off the screen a lot better. Now if you are playing HDR material, we do have the HDR brightness slider. We can go all the way down from a negative 2, and then bring it all the way up to a plus 2. Again, very much like brilliant color, if you want to get the most pop out of your HDR content, then you might want to keep this all the way up on plus two. As for black levels, they're not going to be as great as say like a JVC or a Sony, but they are acceptable for a DLP projector. If you can tell from the black bars in this particular scene, they do skew more gray rather than black, but there's still visible shadow detail in the very darkest areas such as in this movie. And of course for gaming, just like Elias said, if you're playing at 1080p resolution, then you can be a competitive gamer if you wanted to. And it's also very acceptable for 4K gaming as well. Now there is a bit of rainbow effect if you're sensitive to it, but if you're not sensitive to it, I wouldn't go looking for it, but just know that this is a DLP projector, so you will see it from time to time. At the time of this video, the BenQ TK700 is selling for $1,500. Of all these BenQ projectors we've had in here for review, this one was the best we've tried for gaming in 4K and HDR. If we dropped it down to 180 then gaming was even better. So as strictly a gaming projector, this is definitely a winner. For movies, it's one of the brightest projectors I've seen so far at 3200 lumens. Keep in mind, if you're using this at its brightest setting, the lamp life will be around 4000 hours. In Smart Eco, it's 8,000 hours, Eco is 10,000 hours, and for the longest lamp life, keeping it on lamp save will be around 15,000 hours. Although, this is the dimmest setting and will look the worst for HDR content. I forgot to mention, it does have manual lens control, two HDMI 2.0 inputs maxed at 4K60. It isn't native, but will give you 3840 by 2160 resolution, and it is rated to 3200 lumens, so it is really bright. Now on its brightest setting, it's actually bright enough where I could use it with the lights on, albeit with some picture washout, but you can still make out what you're watching on screen. The colors are bright and vibrant for movies in the dark and was equally impressive in game mode with really nice shadow detail. Now if you wanted a more movie centric projector and don't care for the gaming features, you can always pick up the TK850i. This one's got Android TV built in for streaming, whereas the 700 doesn't. And if you can't fit any of these traditional long throw projectors in your house, the V7050i Ultra Short Throw with its special color calibration under high brightness might be an even better choice for streaming and better picture quality. So BenQ has got a few options for anyone that wants a big screen gaming or movie theater experience at home. So those are our thoughts on the BenQ TK700 gaming projector. If you'd like to pick one of these up or any of the ones mentioned in this video, I'll leave some links for them down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.